In this topic, we are going to talk about some additional aspects of the performance appraisal process. And in previous topics, we have discussed about individual aspects. In this topic, we have combined two, three topics, uh, additional aspects about the performance appraisal. Now, the first one is the standardized appraisal forms. Whether to use standardized appraisal forms which are developed by the uh, headquarters, by the parent country and apply them all over the world. There are adv advantages of that. Advantages are that the performance appraisal process is going to be standardized. Uh, the performance is going to be evaluated on the same criteria all over the world. And therefore, it is something which can be then clubbed together and can be compared. But there are definitely disadvantages because, uh, you know, you cannot standardize something uh, on a global level. There could be different types of uh, uh, requirements of a job in one, uh, in one country and the requirements may totally be different in another country. For example, the requirement of a manager in a US or a, a UK firm uh, would be something else and the requirement of the manager in a Pakistani firm would be something else. Uh, uh, in UK US firms, uh, the performance uh, ha has to be objective. The person has to be performance oriented. Over here in Pakistan, the person has to be first of all relationship oriented and then the performance is going to follow. So uh, the task of being relationship oriented is very much important and required in the Pakistani context. So how can a standardized form be applied to all contexts in the entire world. So there are disadvantages of those standardized form, but however, it is something which is easier to implement and then develops a comparable data. So uh, maybe for the technical and uh, for the operative kind of jobs, the standardized forms can be developed. But as the job or the task or the role becomes more subjective, uh, the, uh, the requirement is more subjective, the goals are more subjective, then maybe the standardized forms may not be applicable. So it is something which is uh, which may vary in different situations. Uh, then another aspect is that of the frequency of appraisals. Uh, mostly the feedbacks they are uh, the appraisals are conducted uh, on a yearly basis. However, an ideal appraisal system includes continuous, informal, and formal appraisal. So uh, in a, a in an ideal system. Uh, it is not something which should be an intermittent uh, activity, something which happens just after a year. Uh, this has taken form in the educational systems in the, time, in, the, in the form of a semester system in which uh, students are required to perform and require, they are evaluated continuously. So their class participation is, is evaluated, their midterm, final term uh, performance is evaluated, the, their quizzes are evaluated. So, it is a continuous form of informal and formal evaluation and appraisal. This also has to be applied in the uh, organizational aspect as well, uh, in, in the organizations as well. And the, those organizations who implement a formal and informal system of appraisal are more uh, successful than the other uh, organizations which only conduct it uh, only once a year. And it has also been found that firms who conducted yearly appraisals employed hard criteria for evaluation. So that means that they did not take into account the subjective aspects of performance, which are really very, very important for making uh, the, uh, uh, the performance appraisal a, com uh, a, a comprehensive and an overarching uh, framework of appraisal. Uh, then is the aspect of feedback. Feedback on performance is most important element because unless you do not get the uh, feedback, uh, you are not able to improve your performance. So the objective of performance appraisal and performance management is that the performance of a person will be maintained, sustained and improved. So you will not be able to improve if the feedback is not given. The problem of feedback in, in the international context is that performance management, uh, performance appraisal is conducted in one country and then the data is sent to the other country, to the headquarters, and then a, a feedback on that would then come after a certain time period. So the time gap and the geographical distances, they create a problem for this feedback loop. And challenge for, a sub, uh, for an expatriate is that 
mostly feedback is available on hard criteria because expatriate performance if it is being measured by the headquarters they cannot observe the performance of that person on uh, on on the subjective nature they cannot observe his performance they can only get measurement statistics on the performance of that person and that is also a challenge uh, for the virtual assignees where do they get the uh, feedback from will they get the feedback from because virtual assignees are those who are sitting in one place and they are also looking after the functions of uh, some aspect of a subsidiary in another place as well and virtually looking after that so whose uh, you know feedback they will take into account will they take into account the feedback of the subsidiary unit manager or the parent country manager and finally an very important aspect of this performance appraisal process is that performance appraisal of home country nationals so we talked about the parent country nationals the third country nationals who are the expatriate but what about the performance appraisal of people working in a multinational who are the citizens of the country where the multinational has established the subsidiary unit uh, so the performance appraisal must uh, uh, include cultural applicability unless the cultural applicability is not there the cultural applicability is not taken into account as we discussed in the context of mexican and american context it will not be a, an appropriate and objective feedback then local responsiveness may affect standardization and global orientation so the organization has to balance between the local responsiveness ki aap jo home country citizens hain aap unko kitna leverage dete hain aap unki kitni uh, jo uh, unki cultural requirements hain how much do you take that into account और आप अपने रूल्स और अपना कल्चर उनके ऊपर कितना इम्पोज करते हैं सो so, अगर आप बहुत ज़्यादा उनकी लोकल रिस्पॉन्सिवनेस को शो करेंगे उनके ही कल्चर को अडॉप्ट कर लेंगे तो फिर आपकी अपनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का कल्चर कहाँ जाएगा और आपके ऑब्जेक्टिव्स कहाँ जाएंगे सो यू नीड टू मेक अ बैलेंस बिटवीन दैट एंड होम कंट्री नेशनल मे बी इन्वॉल्व टू डिवेलप द अप्रेजल सिस्टम सो अगर आप उनको इस प्रोसेस uh, में इन्वॉल्व कर लें तो उससे उनकी जो रिप्रजेंटिवनेस है वो बेहतर हो जाएगी एंड दे विल फील दैट दे आर ओनिंग द अप्रेजल प्रोसेस दैम सेल सो द परफॉर्मेंस अप्रेजल ऑफ पोस्ट कंट्री नेशनल्स ऑफ द सिटीजन ऑफ द कंट्री दैट हु आर वर्किंग इन योर सब्सिडरी यूनिट दैट इज ऑल्सो एन इम्पॉर्टेंट आस्पेक्ट सो हाउ द होम कंट्री नेशनल रोल्स दे आर कंसीव एज वी सॉ इन द केस ऑफ पेरेंट कंट्री नेशनल्स एंड थर्ड कंट्री नेशनल्स दे वर कल्चरल बाउंड्रीज so over here the cultural boundary is between the parent company and the uh, hcn manager uh, so there is one cultural boundary the hcn manager who is the role recipient is receiving the role from the parent country which is affected by the cultural boundary but uh, the stakeholders host country stakeholders who are also the role senders their expectations they do not pass through a cultural boundary so um the host country national manager will be more responsive towards the host country stakeholders and will be more aligned with the host country stakeholder role expectations whereas the parent country role expectations may pass through a cultural boundary and therefore create a little bit of complication so that is how the role of a host country national is perceived and therefore the performance appraisal of a host country national must consider the cultural applicability of this process of role conception